In this video, we're going to go over consistency, what are the trade-offs that you'll want to think about for your application, and how you're going to configure your Cosmos DB so that you have the optimal trade-offs uh, between consistency, availability, uh, and performance for your application. To kind of help uh, set the context and um, take a look at the trade-offs for consistency, let's take a look at a, an example. So let's say we have a Cosmos DB account that's configured in West, US, East, US, and North Europe. And what we're looking here is an individual partition set within that Cosmos DB account. So we have a set of resource partitions in which we have a set of replicas within regions. And what we're going to do is we're going to be replicating that data across these different regions. Now, uh, behind the scenes, Cosmos DB actually maintains a set of four replicas in each individual region. And this is how it's able to guarantee, you know, uh, a high, uh, high availability with uh, SLAs of four nines, uh, even with a single region. And that's because uh, there's a high amount of redundancy even within the region. Basically, we'll have a set of four replicas. One is designated as a leader. The others are designated as followers. One of them is a forwarder that replicates across regions. And anytime a write comes in, uh, what will happen is replication within the region is going to be synchronous the write will be replicated to a quorum of replicas within that region uh, before acknowledging that write. Now, doing replication across geographic regions, these regions are going to be uh, much further away. And as a result, uh, with when you're dealing with these high latencies, large geographic distances, uh, what you want to do is uh, uh, replication asynchronously and where uh, while consistency is something that is often desired, uh, there's going to be very meaningful trade-offs here. So let's take a look at what these trade-offs are. And to kind of illustrate an example, um, what we're going to do is we're going to put a record in each of these different regions whose value is 5, and we're going to update that value from 5 to 6. Now, uh, you can imagine that we have acknowledged, uh, what we've done is we've replicated uh, 5 to 6, uh, the new record in this local region. We acknowledge the update, and now we're going to start propagating that value from 5 to 6 over to these uh, more distant geographic uh, other regions, these other resource partitions. And uh, the first example that you're going to want to think about is what happens if a network partition is introduced? Like, what if ha what happens if uh, let's say there's a, a major uh, storm, like a natural disaster or a hurricane that has uh, come in uh, between these two regions and is disrupting the network between uh, the two regions so that propagating the data becomes problematic. Um, so if we have an observer that's uh, constantly reading values out of uh, the, the secondary region, uh, what, what should be the behavior of that reader? Should it see the old value, which is 5, meaning it's going to prioritize availability? Or in the event of this network partition, um, it's going to be a while before this region is caught up. So does, uh, does availability get sacrificed and the system goes offline so that we can prioritize consistency and make sure that um, we never serve the value 5 when it should have been updated to 6, meaning we want to prioritize consistency. Most people understand this or know this as Brewer's cap theorem. Um, and in cap theorem, what it states is it's impossible for a distributed data store to simultaneously provide more than two out of the three following guarantees, consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. Now, cap theorem uh, only talks about the exceptional case, which is what happens when failures occur. Uh, and given that uh, a distributed data store needs to have partition tolerance, are you going to have a system that prioritizes consistency or a system that prioritizes availability? But the trade-offs actually go much deeper than that. And that's because even in the happy case where there's no failure, uh, the latency between two distant geographic regions is going to be high because uh, a packet, the speed at which information can travel is going to be bounded by the speed of light. So if we shine a beam of light from North America to the other side of the world, we're talking about uh, you know one-way distance of about like 80 milliseconds. So uh, the round trip time is going to add up to hundreds of milliseconds, and that's under ideal network conditions. So now if we do this update from five to six, and we have a set of readers looking at, hey, what is the value here? 
and it perhaps has uh, propagated to this region quicker because the network conditions are, are ideal. And for this one, this region might be a little bit further out. So, so what is the value when this reader uh, reads? And should this reader, should reader B see the value five immediately, meaning it's going to accept a stale read because latency is really what it prioritizes. And you might think of a scenario like a social media application where it's okay if uh, you see uh, your friend's wall posts um, uh, a little bit later. Uh, what you want is very, very quick uh, page load times. Or uh, is it going to sit around and make sure that it doesn't serve any stale reads? Uh, since uh, five, the update five to six has already started propagating to additional other regions, it's going to sit around and make sure it's fully caught up. Uh, it's going to establish quorum uh, with the other regions, meaning it's going to, in order to get the quorum, you're actually going to want to read from a, a set of replicas, which is going to negatively impact your throughput. Uh, and then you're also going to wait for those replicas that catch up, meaning you're also going to sacrifice latency just so that you can prioritize consistency. So there's actually a very real trade-off between consistency and the performance of the application in terms of latency and throughput. Uh, this has been codified in the academic world as Pascal's theorem, uh, and uh, in the which states in the case of a network partition in a distributed computer system one has to choose between availability A and consistency C. So this is basically CAP theorem. This is the PAC and PASELC. Else, when the system is running normally in the absence of any kind of network partition, meaning we're in the, the steady normal state, one still has to choose between latency and consistency. Now, the difficult thing for most database systems, uh, commercial database systems, is they force you into extremes. They uh, make you choose between eventual consistency, uh, which offers low latency characteristics, and strong consistency, uh, which has high, uh, high latency characteristics. And the world is, 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 is very black and white. Uh, but the thing is, is that uh, uh, for applications, making this trade-off is not always so easy. You want low latency, but at the same time, you want consistency. Uh, and so what Cosmos DB allows you to do is it adds a few intermediary uh, click stops in which there's five well-defined consistency models. Uh, and you can configure this at the account level and then uh, override the consistency option on a per request basis. And what these consistency models are intended to do is give you clear trade-offs with regards to latency, availability, and throughput so that you're not having to deal with confusing quorum configurations, replication configurations, data set uh, configurations, which uh, often in each of these different layers, you're gonna introduce mistakes. The way you configure this in Cosmos DB is you go to the Azure portal and under settings, you're gonna see a uh, menu entry called default consistency. And you can set a default consistency for that database account and choose from one of these five well-defined consistency models that is strong bounded staleness, session, consistent prefix, and eventual. And basically, if you now were to plot this on along a, uh, a graph, uh, going from left to right, from strong to eventual, basically, as you go to right, you're gonna get lower latency, higher availability, and better read scalability, meaning better throughput characteristics as you go from left to right. And uh, if you go from, from right to left, you're going to get basically stronger consistency um, uh, uh, aspects. Now, let's take a look at what these each each of these different consistency models really mean. Uh, for strong consistency, this is basically the concept of per perfect consistency. It's uh, and in in the academic world, what we call this is linearizability, uh, or what we're guaranteeing is linearizability. And what that means is that once an operation is complete, so let's say I perform a write operation and I acknowledge it, it is guaranteed that it will be visible to all subsequent requests in that uh, database system. Now, as we relax consistency uh, so that we can get lower latency, higher availability, and better read scalability, what are these additional consistency levels that we can define? So for bounded staleness, uh, what it's gonna offer is the concept of a consistent prefix. And what a consistent prefix means is that replication will always happen uh, in order. 
uh, of, of those rights. So you'll never see out of order records, uh, out of order rights when you perform a read request. Uh, and, and to give you an example, if we were to write, you know, operation one, uh, perform write operation two, and perform write operation three, you're not going to see operations one and three with a gap in time missing two. You're also not going to see three, two, and then one. You're not going to see out of order rights. Uh, the prefix is always going to be consistent. Uh, so if you see two, you're guaranteed to see one. If you see three, you're guaranteed to see two and one, and those are going to be in order. Th furthermore, uh, for bounded staleness, what it's basically guaranteeing is you'll get perfect consistency outside of a staleness window, uh, but within that staleness window, uh, you're, you're going to see um, only consistent prefix guarantees. And uh, this staleness window is basically defined by uh, uh, an, um, two numeric values. One is uh, a time interval, and the other is uh, a number of K operations uh, happening. And this is actually a really nice trade-off for if you have an application that requires uh, high availability uh, and you want reasonable latency, while typically you still want something that's strongly consistent, uh, bounded staleness is actually a very, very good trade-off. Now, for session consistency, rather than having a staleness window and guaranteeing strong consistency outside of the staleness window, uh, and then guaranteeing a consistent prefix within the staleness window, for session consistency, what you're doing is you're basically guaranteeing strong consistency within the scope of a session. And this way, you don't have to pay the performance penalty of getting a, a globally strong consistency, but rather within that scope of a session, you're going to get monotonic reads, you're going to get monotonic rates, you're going to be able to read your own rights, and rights will always follow the reads. Meaning if you read a value, you can expect all subsequent reads to also have that value. And if you uh, perform write requests, um, what you'll find is after that write request, all subsequent uh, 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 operations will also respect uh, that, that write request. Now, uh, this is uh, the most popular consistency model uh, in terms of usage in Cosmos DB. And that's because it offers a, a, a very nice blend of predictable consistency for the session, uh, as well as a uh, very good uh, throughput and latency characteristics. The other consistency models are consistent prefix, meaning uh, the only consistency guarantee is that you'll never see these out of order um, writes or you won't see any gaps in time or uh, eventual consistency. And eventual is going to be the weakest form of consistency in which um, uh, the only guarantee is the replicas will eventually converge. Uh, and uh, the reason for choosing this is it has the lowest cost for reads out of all of the consistency levels, meaning a read can always be served out of a single replica. It doesn't need to achieve quorum, and it's always going to have the lowest latency possible too because you can read from the nearest replica and immediately return. Now, for bounded staleness, I mentioned that you can configure a maximum lag in terms of operations and maximum lag in terms of time. This is really not as complicated as it sounds. It's basically two numeric uh, fields that you're gonna fill out. What is the max lag in terms of time? What is the max lag in terms of operations? And what Cosmos DB will do is it'll guarantee uh, that um, beyond this stillness window, uh, you'll, you'll have predictable uh, consistency uh, uh, outside of this stillness window. And uh, if if the replicas ever start to start lagging behind beyond the maximum lag, uh, either in terms of operations or time, what I'll do is that I'll start applying back pressure on the right path to force these replicas to to catch up. For session consistency, uh, the session is actually maintained uh, in the form of a session token, and by default, the session tokens are are cached by the client SDK, so you don't really have to think about it when you're uh, performing a sequence of operations from the client SDK. However, if you want to preserve uh, the session uh, across a number of clients, so let's say you've scaled out an uh, a set of application servers, and uh, each time a, uh, a user of the application performs a request, it might actually be talking to a different application instance. What you can do is you can extract the uh, session uh, in which each time you perform a request, uh, a re um, 
any kind of request. In the response, what you'll see is a session token um, coming back from the response. You can actually pass that back to the downstream uh, user client, let's say uh, the browser, and persist that session token in the form of a cookie. And then that way, when they perform a follow-up request and they hit a different application instance, uh, if you want to um, if you want to maintain that session consistency, uh, what you can do is you can override the uh, session token on the request option for the follow-up read request and make sure that that way they're always able to read their own writes and, and guarantee the session consistency. Basically maintain the session across uh, a set of clients. Um, and of course, consistency can always be rela relaxed on a per request basis. So let's say I have configured a, an account that uses bounded staleness, uh, in which for bounded staleness, we're actually going to be performing um, uh, core room reads uh, to maintain the consistency guarantees. Uh, however, uh, let's say I have a specific request in which I do not have as strong of a consistency requirement. And instead, uh, for this particular request, I just want the lowest latency possible and the highest throughput possible. What I can do is in the request option is I can also set the consistency level to um, a lower consistency level. And that way, uh, I, I can make sure that that read is as fast as possible. Uh, that concludes our uh, video on consistency. Thank you for watching.